So in today's setup guide, I'm going to show you how to link up Techno Power Up through the latest 13.6 sub launch box. So in this guide, I'm going to show you how to do this and get you the best experience possible. And if you're new to Techno Power Up, I'll quickly tell you what it is. It pretty much emulates a lot of arcade game systems from the late 90s to around 2012, 2013. And it's got some classics on it. So check this video out. So if you're new to this channel, just hit notifications if you like what you see today and also hit subscribe. It gets you the latest content as I upload it and it also helps my channel out greatly. So let's get into this. First of all, you're going to need the latest launch box, which is 13.6. And I actually did a setup guide on this one a couple of days ago. So be sure to check that one out in my launch box playlist. So we need to download the TechnoParrot emulator and we of course need a game. So I'm going to take you to the TechnoParrot website and I'm going to just briefly go through the compatibility section. Now under this section we got a little legend at the top. Now blue tick means the games are going to be running flawlessly and there's plenty of them. There's around 170 games as supported by the TechnoParrot emulator. And we've also got a green tick. And generally, a lot of these games do work fine from what I see of things. So if you're looking at running particular games and they happen to have an amber symbol or a stop symbol, then you don't have any chance. And it's just a process of just waiting for developers of Techno Power Up to improve the emulator. So anyway, what we're going to do is go to the Downloads tab and we're going to download Techno Power Up. Now, once we're under the Downloads tab, you're going to see Recommended Software, and it's recommended you to download the latest DirectX user runtimes and the Visual C++ redistributable runtimes all in one. If you don't have these, it's unlikely your games are going to boot at all. So make sure you download and install both of these recommended software packages. But for this, I'm going to just go to Techno Power. So once we're at the download section, we got two options here. So your legacy release is going to require you to download and install this and that separately. But if we go to the download bootstrapper option, that's going to automatically download everything that we need to get up and running with Techno Power. So for that reason, I'm going to suggest you download the TB bootstrapper and just download this. And once it's downloaded, let's just open this up. And this is what we've got inside of that download. So what we need to do, or what I'm gonna do, is create a new folder on my desktop for this. So right click, new folder, and I'm gonna just call this one Techno Parrot. Now I'm gonna set up Techno Parrot on my desktop, but you can set up wherever you want. So once you've done that, what I'm gonna do is just drag all the contents of Bootstrapper inside of this Techno Parrot folder. And that's it. So let's open up the Techno Parrot. And once we're in here, what we're gonna do is just open up the TB Bootstrapper application. So just double left click on that one. And Windows protected your PC, go to more info and run anyway. And yes, if you get a little window pop up and what it's doing now, it's just going through everything that isn't installed. Uh, so first thing you need to do is actually set where you want this to install to. So this is the reason I've created a dedicated Techno Parrot folder to install this into. So what I'm gonna do is go to browse and I'm gonna go to desktop and I'm gonna highlight my Techno Parrot folder, which I've just created and select folder and what i'm going to do next is just simply go to full install and that's going to download everything that we need to get techno parrot running okay so once that process is finished you should get a little window up saying techno parrot has downloaded successfully if you okay this and your first prompt is going to be, looks like the first time you're running TechnoParrot UI. UI stands for User Interface. Uh, please set emulation settings. Let's press OK on this. And you've got no game set up. Do you want to add one now? So for this tutorial, I'm using the Aless game or Alessi. And I'm going to just go to yes on this. Now, the first thing I'm going to suggest is if you go to the three horizontal lines at the top and just scroll down to install updates, and update that's going to get us the latest and greatest components that this emulator requires so always make sure to update techno parrot because it regularly gets updated 
Okay, so once the update and process is finished, what we're going to do next is just go back to return library. And it's asking us again if we want to set games up. Do you want to add one? So I'm going to just press yes. And what I'm going to do is just go to games and a list. And I'm going to go to add game. Now I'm going to go to game settings and I'm going to link up my game into this emulator. And how we do this is go to game executable at the top just here. And if you just left click anywhere around this space and what we're going to do is locate my game so it's on my desktop as we can see it's in my last folder and i'm going to double left click to go inside and this is the file that i need to select for this so i'm going to just left click on this once open and save settings okay and next thing we're going to do is set up a controller for this game so controller setup and what I'm going to do is just start off with test. And what test in service does is it activates a menu whilst we're in some of the games for Technopara. Sometimes it's going to ask us to press a test button or a service button. So I'm using my PlayStation 3 controller for this. And I'm going to make it a little bit more discreet where I'm likely not going to touch that button during gameplay. So I'm going to use my back left bumper and for service, my back right bumper. Start is a bit of a no-brainer. I'm going to be using my start button. Up, I'm actually going to use my D-pads for this, but if you've got an analog stick, then be sure to use an analog stick if you want. Down, I'm going to press down, left, right. Now, your buttons 1 to 8 just there, they're obviously going to be your action buttons, and if you've got enough buttons on your controller to do this, then obviously do each one. If you don't have enough buttons, then, you know, just do what you can and just go to save settings. So first thing I'm going to do now is just go to launch game and just test if this game is actually working before we launch it through launch box. So launch game. And as we can see, that's working perfectly. And I'll just press escape on my keyboard to exit that game. Okay, so let's boot up LaunchBox. And like I said, this is the latest 13.6. And if you've not yet set this up, check out yesterday's guide on how to do this. So once we're inside of LaunchBox, what I'm going to do is just close this down and just maximize the window. I'm going to go to menu at the top. And if I go to tools and then down to manage, and I'm going to go to emulators. Now I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add Techno Parrot, which I've just set up. And this is going to bring up a new window. So from here, I'm going to just type under emulator name Techno Parrot. And the application path, this is where we need to link this up with the emulator itself. And we're going to look for the XC of Techno Parrot, which actually opens up the emulator. So if we go to browse, it's on desktop. And my Techno Parrot folder is just here. And this is where we're going to find that XC. So if we just scroll down and I'm going to highlight, left click, highlight Techno Parrot UI. If I just go to open now. So next thing I'm going to do is just go to Associated Platforms. And what I'm going to do next is under Associated Platforms, I'm going to just type in Sengin which is the distributor of a list or the publisher. Uh, but that might vary from game to game. Say you've got a Nintendo game, then you're obviously going to want to put something along the lines of Nintendo or Sega in that space. And I'm going to just go over and make sure default emulator is actually checked. So once that's been done, I'm going to just go down to OK, and that's fine. And I'm going to close that. And as we can see, uh, Technopara is now under Manage Emulators, which is all set up. Close. And now I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Import and ROM Files. And this is where I'm going to put in my LS game so LaunchBox can see it. So I'm going to go to Next. I'm going to go to Add Files. 
And I'm going to also locate my Techno Parrot folder through here. And this is where we're going to find the game. And once we're inside this Techno Parrot folder, I'm going to just scroll down until I come to User Profiles. And here is my game, a less. So I'm going to double left click on the list. And I'm going to go to Next. And what platform are you importing games for? So I'm going to just type in Senjin. And under Scrape As, I'm going to make sure this one is checked to Arcade. And I'm going to go to Next. And choose the emulator. So it's already selected to worry. Techno Parrot. I'm now going to press Next. And I'm going to use the files in their current location. I don't want to move my games around for this. So I'm just going to left click on that one. And just leave this Next window box checked just here and go to Next. And this is a part where we can scrape all the artwork. Now, let me say that if you download everything just here, it's going to hog up your hard drive. So just be very selective what you're going to download just here, because there's likely going to be a lot of stuff that you don't really need. But just for this tutorial, I'm going to download everything and press next. Configure MU Movies, that's a separate guide altogether, really, but it just entails you go to the MU Movies website and sign up for free and you can get preview videos for your games. I'm going to go to next, however, and I'm going to go to next again, and now it's scanning for our game, and here it is. And once we get to the final part of this, ready to import, let's just make sure that under title, your game isn't a series of letters or numbers, just title it appropriately. So it's already done this for me. So what I'm going to do now is just go to finish. So once you've scraped all your metadata and everything's downloaded, what I'm going to do next is just hover over this icon on my game, right click on it. And if I go to edit and edit metadata, I'm going to just find the Launching tab, which is just here. And I'm going to just highlight by left-clicking the Alesti.xml, and I'm going to right-click it, and now Copy. And then just go down to the Emulation tab just here. And I'm going to just make sure that Use Custom Command Line Parameters is checked. And I'm going to type in this command. And after I've typed in equals, I'm going to now paste what I've just copied. And there we go. And once that's done, I'm going to go to OK. We're now ready to play our game. Let's just go to play. So that's it for today's LaunchBox and Techno Parrot setup guide. Like I said at the beginning, it's slightly different to your usual LaunchBox setups, but we got there. And as we can see, we've got games running just fine as well with the configuration of the controller. So if you've not yet hit notifications, be sure to do that because I'm always uploading emulation retro content. Be sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And also be sure to check out my new membership options here on YouTube and join me. So until next time, stay retro.